Hey guys, it's Special Aussie here and welcome to episode 16 of my Athletic Bilbao series for Football Manager 2019. So today's episode is going to be a pretty interesting game. We're going to take on Atletico Madrid. We are currently first in the table. I'll show you the league table in a bit more depth here. As you can see, we're one point ahead of both Real Madrid and Barcelona. We've done really well this season. We've actually lost the least amount of games, hence why we're top. Uh, but recently, we've hit a bit of a dip in form. Not too drastic. We haven't really been losing any games, as you can see. But uh, we have actually drawn quite a few, say in the last six or seven games, I think we've drawn maybe five and one, two. So, and that's obviously not, well, it's including the league, but there were also other games in there that we've drawn, uh, the Copa del Rey and stuff like that. Copa del Rey, I should probably pronounce it correctly. But uh, yeah, so we are still top. The, the gap between us and these other teams is very, very small now. Today's opponent, Atletico Madrid, they're on 40 points, so we do have six ahead from where we are. We are six ahead, but they do have a game in hand. So if they do win today, they could potentially be level on points with us if they do indeed win their game in hand. So to say it's an important game would be an understatement. I think uh, this is probably one of the games that is going to define how our season goes. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the transfers, of course. We are just in February, as you can see, so we've done quite a bit of transfer activity. We'll do the ins first of all. I usually do the outs, but let's do the ins. So the first player we brought in was Mikel Lopez for £900,000 from Ibar. Or Ibar. He's a right winger. He's a very, very good overall. I mean, he, he, he doesn't really stand out in any one place. He's got good pace, he's got good technicals, a couple of good mental attributes there as well. Can play striker, but doesn't really have the composure or off the ball that he needs. Uh, but yeah, just a, a good little right wing prospect, 900k, very cheap, and I'm uh, def definitely happy with him. Um, yeah, could be a, a potential backup in the future to Inaki. The next player we brought in was Eduardo Gonzalez for 1.4 million. From Sevilla. He's a centre back. Very, very excited about this guy. Um, as you can see, very strong physicals already. I would hate, like, uh, I would have to say that his mentals are, by his positioning, some of the best I've seen for a 16 year old. They're really impressive. They really are, for a centre back anyway. Like I said, positioning, a little bit low, a little bit of a problem, but. When you look at the other ones, and you look at the leadership there as well, honestly, he could potentially be a future captain of the club. Um, the only other thing that really is a bit of a damper, or puts a bit of a damper on his attributes, is probably his heading as well. 11 heading, the others are pretty good. Passing also a little bit low, because we do play with ball playing centre back, so... But yeah, overall can play left back as well. So again, pretty versatile. He's got decent pace, so he could possibly play there if we do need him to do that. Again, pretty cheap. 1.4 mil. I think that's a bit of a steal. Um, the next player is Sergio Triles. Yeah, we're going to go with Triles. Uh, I, I don't know the pronunciation there. I don't think it's Triles. I think it's... Tr yeah, I'm not even going to try. Uh, but he was brought in from Valencia for 575,000. Very good player. Um, we need centre midfielders, is basically why I bought, bought him in. Technicals are very low, but if you look at some of his other stats, again, he's got pretty good mentals and pretty good uh, physicals there. Uh, we are retraining him as a ball-winning midfielder in the centre midfield position. So, yeah, here's one to look out for. I, you know, under seven, or sorry, under 600k... I think that's a pretty pretty good transfer. It gives us a little bit of a little bit of depth in that midfield position going forward. He is now 17 years old. Um, I can't remember. Yeah, he wasn't he wasn't Basque, so he's only just turned 17 recently, um, which is probably a very good thing that we actually managed to get him in. The next player is Inaki Ochoa, another goalkeeper. I saw this guy. Um, sorry, we brought him in for 2.2 .2 mil. 
from Sporting Gijon. But I saw this guy and I looked at him. I was like, we've already got Athami, but this guy is our backup goalkeeper. Um, he's also Basque as well, which I think is incredible, to be honest. Absolutely incredible. The fact that he was a natural Basque player, um, as you can see, could be the next Santiago Canizares, whoever that guy is. I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, 2.2 mil for him. That's an absolute steal in my eyes, to be honest. Either footed as well. Three and a half star, you know, potential ability, possibly four and a half. Yeah, I'm really excited about this guy. I think our goal, like goalkeeper was the position that I was most worried about when I started this series because it's can it can often be quite hard to find a very solid goalkeeper uh, playing with the Basque restrictions. So the fact that we've got all these good young goalkeepers, I think is a testament to how good how good the series is and how much I'm I'm actually enjoying scouting these young players and trying to bring them in and and sort of seeing who comes through during the youth uh, the youth intakes. But yeah, very good goalkeeper. Definitely a first team challenger going going forward. And the fact that he was a natural bass player as I mentioned before, just you know, it's the icing on the cake. It just makes me feel a little bit better when I signed him. So yeah, 2.2 mil for him. We then signed Matthias Pedrosa, 1.9 mil from uh, La Caruna, uh, Deportivo La Caruna, that is. He's a striker, can play left wing as well, uh, but we definitely signed him to be a striker. I mean, he's not setting the world alight, we'll, we'll be honest, but he's just another another really good prospect that we can, you know, we can train up four-star potential ability with, you know, possibly an extra star, so he could be a five-star player. Um, I had to sign him when I saw that scout report. It just... You, you can't not pass up the opportunity with some of these players, especially if they're going for 1.9 million. You, you really just have to pull the trigger and just hope that he develops the best he can and becomes that top talent that we, of course, want. But yeah, the final player we brought in was Carly Perez for 1.1 million from Sevilla. We, um, yeah, we definitely poached two of Sevilla's best youth prospects from the... Uh, from the intake last season. He's a right back. We didn't really have any natural right backs. Of course, we are training one or two of the guys that have come through our own intake. Uh, but he's a three and a half star potential ability, possibly four and a half. Right footed, really good pace. Lacking a little bit everywhere else, I, I feel like. But if you look at his technicals, he's sort of got the attributes in the right places. He's got seven crossings, seven dribbling, good marking, good tackling, and the passing's there as well. Can also play left back, so again, versatility, have to go for it, um, definitely just helps overall with the whole squad, and uh, yeah, he's definitely one to watch, nice little fee, 1.1 million, pretty cheap, very happy with that. Now, we go into the outs, we let Arbreris go, he was just a centre back, he did, I think he did feature, if I'm, yeah, he played one game, two seasons ago, yeah. One, one game two seasons ago. We let him go on a free transfer. He wanted to leave. It was just, you know, he was causing a bit of problems in the dressing room. So we sold him on a free transfer to Real Valladolid. Uh, the next player we let go was Alex Ramiro, of course, our first team goalkeeper since the series more or less started, barring this season, of course. We sold him to today's opponents, Atletico Madrid, for 11.5 million. This was a hard one to do for me. It was a hard player to let go, purely for the fact that he has been that, you know, the rock, essentially, in goals. But I feel like he has definitely hit a ceiling. I don't think he's going to really do any better. Like, he's done really, really well. I should say that, first of all. But I don't think he's ever going to do as well as he did two seasons... I think it was two seasons ago. The season that we made the Champions League... It was it might have been the first... I can't even I can't even remember now. We're into what our fourth or fifth season here. But yeah, one of the seasons he won the top Spanish goalkeeper award. Kept a lot of clean sheets that year. Um, had a really good rating. But of course, we just got so many good youth goalkeeper prospects at the moment, and yeah, I just don't know. I just don't know. I thought eleven point five million was a, a pretty good fee, despite he. I mean, we sold him to Atletico, but he's only the backup goalkeeper, so. As you can see, he's only started one game. 
Um, let's not talk about his uh, Copa del Rey performances, um, because we'll get into that in a second, of course. Uh, we then let Borja Barbero go on loan to Leonesa. Catalan, of course, the backup goal... Uh, sorry, backup striker. I keep saying goalkeeper because I'm so obsessed with them at the moment. But he's our backup striker. Played a lot of games. Scored against some of the big teams, if you remember, um, a couple of seasons ago. He went on loan uh, to Real Sporting Gijon, of course, who we brought Ochoa in from. Um, so he went out on loan to them. Doing really well there. He is playing as a key player, which is the reason why I let him go. And I believe we also... Oh, no, we didn't. I thought we might have got a, a fee for him, but I think that I think that's someone else. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, developing really nicely. I really want his composure to get up and his finishing. Um, and if those both go up, I think he could be a pretty lethal striker for, you know, for the first division in Spain for La Liga. So yeah, um, and I believe Sporting are in, yeah, they're in our division. So he's playing first team football in La Liga on a constant basis. Uh, the next player we let go out on loan was Lucas Hermida. He went on loan to La Coruna uh, for 160000 per month, which is a really good Really good loan deal. Um, I believe it's also for first-team football. Uh, as you can see, not developing too well. Um, but, yeah, he, he's not doing too bad. Considering we brought him in for 2.9 mil, you know, he's already repaid a little bit, a little bit of that. He's also playing in La Liga, but as you can see, a 6.4 in his only game. Not the greatest in the world. Uh, we then lent... Oh, we then loaned out in... 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 Talsi? In Talsi? I think the X is silent. I want to I wanna hope and pray that it is. So Juan Intausti went on loan to Ibar. Again, similar sort of deal. First team football at Ibar is a very good place. Well, it's a very good place for him to actually play in the first team. Um, I'm, I think, yeah, they, I believe they got relegated. So yeah, La Liga 2. Doesn't really matter. Still first team football. Um, and he's developing quite nicely. He came through our own academy. So yeah. Um, I'm pretty happy with him, and I think he, he could have a, a pretty good future behind Brace in the uh, the left-back position. We then lent out, of course, uh, Pedrosa, who we brought in. He went out on loan to Majada Honda. We'll go with that. Yeah, Majada Honda. And the final player we lent... We, I keep saying lent. I guess lent is the, the correct word, I think. But we also loaned out Vesca. He went out on loan to Crystal Palace. Um, again, similar sort of deal, complaining a lot about having first team football, loan him out for 160,000 per month as well. Just, you know, just keeping him around just in case we might need him next season or something like that for whatever reason. But yeah, they're the transfers. We spent 11.25 mil, brought in 18.5. So again, we're still making a profit over the season, which I think is really good. Uh, but yeah, let's get into the fixtures. Of course, the previous episode was the Besiktas win. Uh, we followed that up with a 3-1 victory over Real Madrid away from home at the Santiago Bernabeu. Harvey Martinez with a brace, and Anaki Williams also on the score sheet there. We followed that with a 3-1 victory over El Ejido in the Copa del Rey fourth round, second leg, putting us through, of course. Sunset got sent off in this one. Anaki Williams with a brace and Anaki. Huh. Interesting. They have the same name, more or less. Uh, but yeah, 3-1 victory there. Good stuff. Followed it up with a 2-0 victory over Leganes in the league. Self-explanatory. Ivan own goal and Itaraspe also on the score sheet there for us. We then managed to beat AEK. San Jose with a penalty. Garmendia getting sent off this time. And Brace with a 90 fourth minute goal there. We then suffered a pretty disappointing defeat, not going to lie, a 4-1 loss to Sevilla. I guess, you know, I guess we kind of got our revenge because we stole two of their, you know, best youth prospects, but yeah, they absolutely battered us here. Alvaro, Sarabia, and Luis Muriel getting their goals and only a single goal from Anaki Williams for us, so yeah. Really disappointing, but we did bounce back against Real Betis in the next game. But as you can see, we left it late. We left it really, really late. 2-1 victory, Williams in the 70th minute, and Hervias in the 93rd minute. 
getting the winning goal there for us. We then played a friendly game against one of our affiliated teams um, during the sort of Christmas break. Um, when we got back to action, it was in the fifth round of the Copa del Rey against Real Oviedo. 3-2 victory here. Xavier Moreno, who is one of the youth prospects, of course, the left winger. Very, very excited about this guy. Of course, I believe I showed you the record. Did I show you the records? I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did in one of the previous episodes. But as you can see, he's played a little bit, uh, mainly due to injuries. Uh, I'll go into that in a second. Um, but yeah, really good game there from him on the score sheet there. And Anaki Williams as well with a brace in that game. Uh, the next game was a pretty... The, sorry, the second leg against Oviedo was a, a pretty boring affair. Nil all draw there as well. This is sort of when our bad run of results... I say bad run, but we still, you know... Essentially, we're unbeaten if you want to go on the results. Um, but of course, we did actually get knocked out of the Copa del Rey, and I'll go into that in a second. Uh, but back to league action, we could only manage a one all draw against Deportivo Alaves. Hervias on the score sheet there to get the equalizer for us. We then face Atletico Madrid in the Copa del Rey quarterfinals. Could only manage a one all draw at home. Again, we went behind, but we did get an equalizer through Catalan five minutes later. Then could only manage another one-all draw against Gijon, um, away from home in the league this time. We did open the scoring, but they got the equaliser in the 88th minute. Absolutely destroyed me, I remember that game. Um, it was two days ago when I played it. Yeah, not, not great. And uh, yeah, it turned from bad to worse, to be honest. The second leg of the Copa del Rey. During this game, I literally experienced absolute joy and absolute misery within the space of about a minute and a half real time. As you can see, we were, well, essentially in this game, we were 1-0 down, of course, 2-1 down over the two legs. Javi Martinez, in the 91st minute, the first minute of stoppage time, gets us the equalizer that puts us level and takes it to extra time. Absolutely dominated them through extra time. Could not score a goal to save our lives. Went to penalties. We lost on penalties. San Jose missing another penalty. costing Essentially costing us the entire game. You know, Nolas Cohen also missed, but he's not really a penalty taker. So, yeah. Yeah, and of course that meant we were out of the cup. We did, however, bounce back with a nice little 4-1 victory at home against La Caruna. Akeze with a brace, Kappa, and Williams also on the score sheet there. Fortunately, followed that up with another draw, nil all at home to Espanyol. And of course, the most recent game I played was... Huh. What can I say about this game? 3 all against Levante... Joseph Martinez with a brace. Akeze and Kappa on the score sheet. Kappa then got sent off in the 81st minute. And what happened? Levante went ahead in the 90th minute. I thought I thought we were getting another loss. But Nolas Cohen makes up for missing that penalty and scores in the 92nd minute. Let me just show you this goal. Let me show you the goal. I have to show you the goal. I don't even, I can't even remember the goal, if I'm being honest, because I, like I said, I played this two days ago. Let's have a look. Of course, we were down to 10 men as well when we scored this goal. It was from a corner. Oh, it kind of was from, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah, 92nd minute. <laughs> what a goal. Anyway. Today's opponents, of course, we're looking for revenge against Atletico Madrid. They knocked us out of the Copa del Rey. We could have made another semi-final, but it wasn't to be. But we are at home today, so I'm looking for a, a better result, if I'm being honest. And like I mentioned, injuries. Big problem so far for us this season. We've had a lot of injuries to the wingers. Constant, you know, constant injuries... Munayin, who was our best performer at the start of the season, was out for five months 
with a broken ankle. Still got another two months to go until he's actually back. Um, Anaki also out with a, a pretty bad injury. I think a two-month injury for him. And Aketse as well, who could essentially play in the left wing or the attacking midfield position. Also been out with an injury for a... Well, he's out for another month, but he's already been out for a month. So, yeah, things haven't been good again on the injury side of things. And I think that has a lot to do with sort of where the, the form has dropped off. But, yeah, anyways, we'll go through today's lineup. This is what a Thami is looking like at the moment. Still looking really good. Still improving. Not as not as much as he was before, to be fair. Uh, but he's still pretty solid in the league. The games we have been drawing, except for the Levante game, have all been really low-scoring affairs, like one-alls or nil-alls. So, he, he's still doing really well. Um, but yeah. Just wish we had, our, you know, our full-strength team... Because I think that we would win the league if we had that at the moment with how things are going. But yeah, today's lineup. Afami in goals, Lukue, San Jose, Martinez, and Brace will make up the back five. Martinez... Sorry, I don't know why this is doing weird things. Nolascoane and Sunset will be our two center mid... Ball-winning midfielders. Sorry. Our inside forward on the right will be Hervias. Moreno will be the advanced playmaker on the left. Not really a, a preferred role for him, which is probably hurting his his average rating a little bit, but what can I do? It's, it's how, how I want to play the tactic and how the, the tactic is played. Um, and, of course, Javi Martinez will sit behind Naki Williams up front. Bench day will be Ag- Ag- Aguirre Bala. Yeah. I always, always change how I pronounce his name for some reason, but we'll go with that today. Garmendia, Rodriguez, Itaraspe, Galan, Lopez, and Villa Libre will be on the bench. And let's advance. Let's get into the game. Um, yeah. I, honestly, I really want revenge. Um, can we do it? That's the other question. Because, of course, Atletico have some really, really good players. Lamar being one of them. And of course, Yere starts today. Alrighty, let's see what we can do. Martinez plays forward to Brace. Nice little flick to Marino. Plays it out wide to Lekue. Gets a knockback, and it's blocked. Still got the ball, crosses it in, and we're going to get on the end of it, but can we do something productive? Cross, Martinez gets in there. Hits the post, but gets his own rebound as well. Good stuff, boys. 11 minutes in, and we're 1-0 up. Perfect start, but can we hold on to it? Can we push forward and just... I just want to pile the pressure on Atletico, to be honest. Sunset now. We've got the ball again. We're pressing forward. Hervias in behind again. Moreno. Ooh, good save. Oh, it actually went out for a goal kick. That looked like a save to me. Hmm. Interesting. We're doing really well. But often time... Well, sorry. At times. The other team will have no shots on target. And then they'll score two goals from two shots on target. So, yeah. The st- you know, those low shot stats, they can always look really impressive. But I often feel like when you're playing football manager, the opposing team will score at least a goal from one or two shots on target, regardless of, you know, how well your defense is playing or whatever. Just what happens sometimes. Martinez now. Ooh. What, why would you pass it back there? Uh, Martinez, Moreno, Brace. Moving the ball pretty well. Sunset with a screamer. Oh my god. What a goal. Outside the box. Absolute screamer. <laughs> wow. 
That's that's a pretty good first half, not gonna lie. They did only have that one shot. Very pleased with the first half. 2 0 up. I wasn't really expecting that, to be honest. I thought this was going to be a, a much tougher game. Martinez, ooh. Oh. I thought he might have shot that into Williams, but Yere actually blocked it. Wonder if uh, Yere is actually helping his old team out. Probably not, because we didn't really play him too much. Hervias, Williams, get in there! That's his 20th goal of the season as well. 3 0 up! Perfect result so far. And I apologize if the new mic is quite loud because I'm feeling like it probably could be. Alright, we're going to make a sub. Alaska Wayne, really struggling with conditioning. Um, who else? Eh, I mean, everyone, everyone's alright, to be honest. Maybe Sunset, but I don't really... I don't really want to bring him off, to be honest. I don't really want to bring anyone off, to be honest. Um, yeah, we'll keep it how it is, apart from the Tarraspe coming on. Alrighty. <laughs> I'm very happy. 3-0 up. Looks like... Um, they've just picked up an... Why is Diego Costa... That's not... What? Wait, What? Why are they playing Diego Costa at left back and then... What is, what is going on with Atletico at the moment? They were just playing Diego Costa, formerly of Chelsea, at left back. And then at defensive mid. That is super weird. Maybe they used all three subs or something, is my guess. I hope they used all three subs and they're not just playing him there for some random reason. Ah, uh, that's offside. <laughs> We're gonna keep the clean sheet. Suck shit, Griezmann. Why do we need to... Yeah, thank you. I thought he was gonna run over and look at the video. Or the VAR. But... Yeah, he didn't. And that, you know, 30 seconds left. I mean, can we push on and get a fourth? Possibly. Moreno with a terrible, terrible shot. And that should be full time. What a beautiful, beautiful win. We kept them to sh two shots, one on target. I feel like that's a, a pretty impressive feat. Yeah, I have no idea what happened. To yeah, they, yeah, they must have used all three subs. Because Costa came on as a sub as well. And then got injured. Um, but yeah. 3-0 victory is pretty impressive. Considering Atletico could have... You know, they could have gone equal on points with us. If they had beaten us today. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. But that's very impressive. I'm, I'm going to leave it here, guys. If you enjoy the video, I mean, I, I think that deserves a like. And if you're not subscribed already, you should definitely do that. Uh, but yeah, apart from that, take it easy. I'm going to go celebrate this win. Goodbye, guys.